بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد Abstinence is a great medicine Allah has sent us in this world those that indulge physically and mentally evil, sin, ma'asiyat, disobedience can wipe out a person that's why they say abstinence is favorable to the head and the pocket abstinence is favorable to the head and the pocket because a person who is plotting to do a sin have a affair how much resources how much costing how much mind power how much holes in his pocket khasirat dunya wal akhira is losing his deen his dunya in his akhirat so the psychology, we're ready to lose weight, but am I ready to lose sin? I'm ready to abstain from food, from my figure, but am I ready to abstain from sin, for my figure in the akhirat? So it's all about the perception. Do I see life in the light of Quran and Hadith, or do I see light in the ways of batil. A person is wearing a face mask. Now a person can check this mask that I'm wearing. Is it really because it is the law of the country? Or if I make a niyat, Ya Allah, give me tawfiq to wear hijab and to obey your command. Then a person will get that reward accordingly. A person will get that reward accordingly. But it's according to the intention that we make, that we will get reward. A person is particular about cleansing taharat. So, is it now because of the recent events or is it because it is the sin of my Nabi? So we need to be checking ourselves all the time. A believer is avarous and desirous for akhirat and he's checking himself all the time. It's not about the sin as well. Again, perception. That the greatest sin in the eyes of Allah are smallest, the most significant in Allah are the most insignificant what people consider. وَأَزْغَرُ الظُّنُوبِ And the most insignificant sins in the eyes of Allah may be great in the eyes of people. What does it mean? Shaykh Fuqih Layth, Rahmatullah Layth, explain that when a person commits a guna and if he considers it to be substantial, paramount, and he fears that he perpetrated and breach the command of Allah, then in the eyes of Allah, that is a small guna because Allah will erase it. Whereas a person commits a small guna and he thinks also that it's insignificant, it's small. But in the eyes of Allah, this is great. Why? Because he has downplayed the greatness of the sun. When a person persists on a sin, it becomes bigger and bigger. Is the, the statement of Saba, La sagirata ma'al israr, wa la kabirata ma'al istighfar. That there is no sagira, small guna, if a person does it repeatedly and is persistent. And there is no big guna, you cannot consider it big when a person makes istighfar and repents. They say one Sheikh Awam ibn Hawshab Rahmatullah alayhi used to say Arba'a ba'da dhambi sharrum min dhamb Four things After committing the guna It is worse than the guna It is worse than the guna Number one Al-istizghar Where a person trivializes the sun He thinks it to be something paltry uh, Insignificant he discounts the gravity of what he's doing. So again, this is the internal kafiyat. 
Number two, al ikhtirab Where a person now is proud and he boasts, he brags about the sin that he done. So, sometimes a person may seemingly think this was small, it's insignificant, but by posting it on the platforms, Instagram, Facebook, a person is now blowing his trumpet. There was a special girl nobody could get to her. Behind the scenes they made a bet. Now he gets her. They make a bet. You can get her in a compromised position. So he sends the photo to his friends. I, I, I conquered. I achieved. Al Istibshar number three. When a person is happy and he regards that as an achievement, he regards it as something auspicious and great. Oh, I showed him a point. Oh, I, I took revenge. This is how I took revenge. So, when the wrongs that we do, we are proud, arrogant, boast about it, then there is great danger. And the last, number four, well, Israr, a person does not have so much regret that it will stop him from that sin, but he persists and he increases in that guna. So the Mashayikh have said that don't be deceived by this ayah, man bil hasana falo ashu amthaliha, that if you do a good deed times ten, but if you do an evil, you will get accordingly. Why? Because the condition for good deeds is to take it to Allah. So many a time a person does good, but they make ghibat of somebody, they owe somebody money, they harm somebody, they lose the effect and the reward of that good deed. So doing action is one thing, but protecting that action is something else. And then if a person says, okay, if I do a guna, there's one written, but there's ten flaws in that. Number one, that when a person does a sin, a ma'asiyat, he has made Allah angry on him. He has made Allah angry on him. And how can a person love with the anger of Allah? Number two, that being who is most despised to him and Allah, he's made that being happy. Wahua Iblis, who is the enemy of Allah and his Rasul, and he's his own enemy. You've made your enemy happy and elated. Number three, he's distanced himself from the best of places, and that is Jannah. So a person is a cause of him losing Jannah. Number four, he's gotten himself close to the worst of places and that is Jahannam. Number five, he has harmed that entity which is most beloved to him and that is himself. That he is harming him oh, his own personal self. Six, he has stained and tainted his nafs, whereas Allah has created him pure. Allah has created him pure, and he has tainted that purity. Seven, he has caused inconvenience and harm to his companions. Who are his companions? The angels that protect him. Number eight, he has caused grief, difficulty, hardship, torment to the Nabi of Allah in his cover. Nine. He has created a chain of testimonies against himself by sinning in the day and night because all his body organs will speak against him. 
the earth will speak against him but that same body will have to suffer the punishment and number 10 he has breached the trust of the entire creation on earth why why has he breached this trust why is he considered as treacherous because when a person does sin then conditions on the earth change raindrops will decrease from the heavens droughts and plagues will become common earthquakes and uh, earthquakes and tornadoes tsunamis whirlwinds different forms of adab will come when a person breaks the command of Allah so we be vigilant that there are ten ayub and flaws ulama have said abkhalu nasi man bakhila ala nafsi lima fihi sa'ada that the most stingy person is a person who's stingy on himself when he deprives himself of the bounties of dunya and akhirah وَأَظْلَمُ النَّاسِ مَنْ ظَلَمَ نَفْسَهُ بِمَعْسِيَةِ اللَّهِ The most oppressive person on earth is one who contravenes the commands of Allah. لِأَنَّ مَنْ عَمِلَ الْمَعْسِيَةِ فَقَدْ أَهْلَكَ نَفْسَهُ Whoever does sin, he's destroyed himself. So one, he's deprived himself of the bounties of dunya and akhira. And secondly, he has and trapped himself in the difficulties and torments of dunya and akhirah. Some of the hukama used to say, Iyaka wadham, be careful of sin and disobedience. Fa inna dhamba, because sin is a calamity, it is a misfortune, and it is like a boulder on a caterpillar. فَيُضْرَبُ عَلَى حَائِتْ This caterpillar wipes out your wall, your structure of obedience. When the structure crashes, then all obedience dies in his life. وَيَدْخُلْ رِيَ الْهَوَى And then the wind of passion overcomes him. وَيُتْفِئُ سِرَاجَ الْمَعْرِفَةِ and thus extinguishes the flame of the recognition of Allah. By committing sin, it is such a calamity, it wipes out obedience. So many aqwal of the mashayikh, where they did this wrong, Allah deprived them of tahajjud, Allah deprived them of tilawat of Quran, Allah deprived them of salah. So a person should be very weary it's not just about the sun. It's not just about how small the sun is. Somebody came to some shuyukh and mashaykh and said, مَا لَنَا نَسْمَعُ الْعِلْمُ وَلَا نَنْتَفِعُ بِهِ We sat in the company of the ulama, we sat in the company of the mashaykh, we listen to bayanat, we are in the majalis, in the sabbat of the shaykh, we go to the ijtimaz, we in the Dabir Ulums. Yet we don't benefit. Our lives are the same. So he said five factors. Number one. قَدْ أَنَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ فَلَمْ تَشْكُرُوا Allah has favored His bounties on you. Yet you are ungrateful. He has given you eyes. You use it in the wrong avenue. A tongue in the wrong avenue. The ears in the wrong avenue. Wealth in the wrong avenue. All the faculties and bounties of Allah which has been bestowed upon you. You are ungrateful and you utilize it in the wrong avenues. Secondly, إِذَا أَذْنَبْتُمْ فَلَمْ تَسْتَغْفِرُوهُ Then you use these faculties in the wrong avenues and you don't make tawbah and you don't repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And three, لَمْ تَعْمَلُوا بِمَا عَلِمْتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ Now you have heard these good talks, these good lectures, these good advices, but you do not practice on them. 
Number four, Sahibtuhum al akhyar You've sat in the company of these pious people. You've seen their lives, but it is void of guidance. You don't take lesson. And number five, Dafantum al amwat falam ta'tabiru bihim. You have buried your dead people. And every time you bury somebody, you don't take lesson. Your life hasn't changed one but. Your life hasn't changed one but. May yazra'u al-bir yahsud. Those that plant piety will harvest its tranquility. May yazra'u su yahsud in nadama. Whoever plants evil they will reap the crops of regret they will reap the crops of regret great kullu siflatin ya'mal ta'a walakin al kareem may yatruk al ma'asiya the mashayikh used to say every ordinary normal average person can do some good deeds that's not kamal that's not the height of perfection do what you need to do but better it by staying away from ma'asiyat. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stipulated for good deeds, you need to bring it to Allah. As for staying away from guna, there's no conditions. Man ja'a bil hasana, that's the reward. Wanahan nafsa anil hawa, immediately after this, you stay away from guna. فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى Then Jannat is your abode and your destiny. Jannat is the place you should be. So a person who is not weary of Allah, not weary of Akhirat, not weary of death, he does not realize and does not prepare accordingly. They say there was a wealthy, wise scholar and at the time of death he called his son and he said that when I depart, from this world and they wash my body I want you to put one of my socks after the takfin so soon after that he passed away and he left a big estate so the body was being washed and after it was completed the son remembered the wasiyat of his father so he gave an old sock to the person washing the deceased so he said, in accordance with my father's last request, please put the sock on. So he refused. He said, this is impossible. It is against shariat. And there was a dispute. So somebody was there said, ask the ulama. So they went to the mufti. The mufti said, it is not permissible. So the deceased was buried as is. Then there was a friend of the Marhum and he said, your father had left for you some advice, a letter. He had trans entrusted me with an amana. So he gave him an envelope. The boy opened the envelope and in it was written, my son, all this wealth and property that I've left for you, you can see that at the last moment of my life, I cannot even wear an ordinary sock. I cannot even wear an ordinary sock when you one day also come into this condition you will not be able to take anything and the shroud and the coffin will be exactly the same and the size of your qabr will be exactly the same make sure you utilize the wealth properly may Allah give us the week of abstaining from asya and sin and spending our life in ipat and obedience the amal for today is أفضل العمال إدخال السرور على المؤمن The best amal is to create happiness in a believer Whether you gave him clothing, you fulfilled his hunger Or you fulfilled his needs إن أحب العمال إلى الله بعد الفضائض After the فضائض, the best amal in the eyes of Allah is إدخال السرور To make a Muslim, a mu'min happy وآخر دعوانا عن الحمد لله رب العالمين